All right, shalom. I want to give all glory on the praises to you. How will God show me? How will show you? Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone who only teach well. Peace of salutation to the like 144 first fruit. So I have this Time magazine article, Ukraine, Ukraine's lose-lose energy war. So I read a little bit of, of it. Um, first paragraph alone is it hits a heavy point. As you can see in the screen, you have some fire going or whatnot. Pretty much this was a, a picture of a Russian missile attack uh, that actually hit an energy facility. That's why it's named Ukraine's lose-lose energy war. So pretty much it says, just as the White House is reported to be uh, lecturing, lecturing Ukraine not to continue drone strikes on uh, Russian oil refineries, Moscow unleashed an explosive onslaught against Ukrainian power and water plants from March 22nd to the 24th that has left an estimated 1.2 million Ukrainians in the dark. Imagine that, 1.2 million. Mm. Trying to... Uh, let me see something here. I'm trying to paint a picture. Because. See, I got. <clears throat> Okay, okay, that's a good. So the population, so here's a good. So 1.2 million Ukrainians left in the dark. So pretty much that city that it's speaking about that they shot, I can't even pronounce it. It's right there. So that city's about the size of, you wanna say like San Antonio, Texas. So we all know San Antonio, Texas, San Antonio Spurs, all that good shit. Fairly decent sized city. Out of power in no water. So it says, um, although both 2020 and 2022 energy crisis and Russian um, atrocities in Ukraine have faded from many minds, uh, the escalating attacks on civil infrastructure on both sides have been affecting global markets and, and politics. They are also a stark reminder that a war in uh, a war in still Europe rages on. So this goes to show you in war it's not all about who kills the most people, things of that nature. It's about strategy. It's about strategy until will until you can subdue your enemy or the enemy surrenders uh, to ultimately prevent casualties. Okay, so it kind of reminded me of the Book of Judith, which I'm gonna get real quick. I think Judith the seventh chapter, where these fucking Edomites came against us too. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to start at 8. So this is Judith chapter 7 and 8. It says, Then came unto him the chief of uh, children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the sea coast, and said, Let our Lord now hear a word. So pretty much, you know, they're coming to, if I'm saying it right, Holofernes, uh, who was coming against Israel during this time. Um, to subdue Israel, they said, let, let, let me, the Edomites and the Moabites, let, let, let me come and tell you a strategy that we have, okay? Because you know the Moabite, well, especially Edomites, they hate us. So they, 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 they studied us just like they study us today to find a way to destroy us, all right? Just during this time, they weren't in power. So it says, let our Lord now hear a word that there be not an overthrow in thine army. It says, For this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. 
Now, when you look at the geography of like Jerusalem in that area, it is very hilly and it has a lot of mountains. So this is true statement. So it says, uh, verse 11, shoot, even when you watch that book of clearance, you can see the terrain and the, um, and things that are nature. It was very, a lot of mountains and very, a lot of hills in that area. Okay. And that's where Israelites dwell. So it says, now, therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in battle array. Because why? Because we would have that advantage, elevation, things of that nature. And there shall not uh, so much as one man of thy people perish. So it says, remain in thy camp and keep all the men of thine army and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issued forth of the foot of the mountain. So pretty much what Esau is saying here is, don't go fight them hand-to-hand -hand combat. They'll beat your ass. Okay? Or they just have an advantage simply because of the terrain and the environment. You'll lose a lot of men trying to rush up in there. Instead, they have their water supply at the base of their, of their camp. Cut off their water supply. All right, so let's keep going. It says, for all the inhabitants of Beth Leo, um, have their water thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city, and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and will camp upon them uh, to watch that uh, go out of the city, and to watch none go out of the city, pretty much starving to death, all of that, because cutting off water supply will cut off your crops, so you'll starve to death and you won't have any drinking water. You saw this happen in Israel with Gaza, all right? The the um, the Gaza war that's going on right now, they cut off all food and water supply, and millions have been dying from famine as of lately, and on continual bombing, and in sending sulfur strikes on the ass. Brutal tactics. But... It wins. You see what I'm saying? So it says, so they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with famine. And before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Right. Because they're going to be weak, malnourished, and they're not going to have the energy to fight back. And it's going to be easy kills. It says, thus shall thou render them an evil reward because they rebelled and met not the person, uh, thy person peaceably. So that's pretty much what's going on here. Russia sent missile strikes to their energy plants and cut off food, pretty much their water and their energy. It's going to come to a point where these people, this was March 22nd and 20th. It's only been, what, a day since this happened. They've been in the dark for about a day or two. Best believe soon we're going to get some word that people are going to, these 1.2 million Ukrainians that are in the dark, who have no water, no light, and no food, they're going to start starving to death. And, you know, Russia is going to overtake that area. So this was a perfect tactic by Russia to go ahead and knock that out so they can get in, infiltrate, and take over the city and ultimately gain more ground in Ukraine and claim it back what is theirs. Caveat, I am on no side. I am on no side. I'm just stating the facts here. I don't care about Russia. I don't care about Ukraine. I care about prophecy. And this is all part of prophecy. So Lord willing, this is edifying. We'll see how this uh, plays out. Like always, Shalom and repent for Yahweh Shai is coming back sooner than what me and you believed. All right, Shalom.